Well, of course, I'm going to remember to shoot this video. As the title suggests, this is an AWS question that I get all of the time. It's someone on, let's say, a Windows system that is trying to connect to their EC2 instance using SSH. Let's take a look at it. So here we are in the AWS Management Console, and we are going to pop over to the EC2 service. We're going to do everything from scratch. Uh, there is one thing that I'm going to do uh, to get prepared for this, though, and I want uh, you following along at home to do the same thing. I'm going to create a new folder here on my C drive, and I'll call this uh, something real indescript, like a one 3D S2, <laughs> right? I want to give this a name that doesn't indicate it contains my security credentials to access AWS with, right? This is where we're going to put our key file and I want it to have a real, you know, obscured name. All right. So that's the one thing that I needed to do to prepare for this, uh, you know, launching of a new instance. So let's launch an instance together. I'm going to go ahead and launch something fun. What would be fun? Oh, how about, wow, Windows Server 2019. Wow. Uh, I don't think I've even, have I launched that and played with that, the 2019 version? I don't know. It's all a blur. All right. Anyways, um, I'll go ahead and do their free tier, uh, you know, tier. I'm, I'm stunned that it would even launch on such a lame instance. Now, I'm not going to do anything with security because right after this demonstration, I'm going to be tearing this thing down. Um, oh, I wanted to show how you could get into uh, instances, though, not using remote desktop protocol, but I actually wanted to show how you, do, you could get to your Linux boxes because I think that's what the uh, user was trying to do that emailed me. So let me go ahead and jump in there and create uh, like an Amazon EC2 Linux instance or I suppose, let's be a little bit more realistic. <sighs> Sorry, this is taking so long to pick an image, but I'll pick something like, oh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, right? Or, you know, Ubuntu server, right? Something very, very popular in the Linux vein. All right, so we're going to review and launch this puppy. Again, I'm going to launch it with very little security. And here is the key pair process. And so we're going to create a new key pair together. It's an RSA type, and I'm going to name this. Uh, my demo key pair and we are going to download this key pair and remember what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in that real in you know that that uh, super obscure uh, directory that we built so I'm going to go to the C drive there it is and I'm going to paste that in now what you need to do with uh, this key pair now is you need to check its you need to check its permissions. This will not work if the permissions are too wide open. So I go into the properties of this file and you're going to make sure that like this just uh, base users group does not have uh, full control, for instance. I don't think these settings of read and execute and read are going to be a problem. The admins, of course, have rights. So you need to make sure that something like the everyone group is not in here because uh, the AWS system is not going to let you connect. OK, so there is our key pair that we are going to use to make the connection. And we are now ready to launch the instance. So I'm going to click that launch instance button. Oh, gosh, what is going on now? Sometimes my recording software uh, causes these AWS windows to freak out a little bit. Let's see if I can go down and choose launch instance. Oh, look at this. It's not working. Ugh. All right. I got to pause the video here. One second, folks. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Um, that is the weirdest thing. My Camtasia video recording software freaks out with some of those AWS windows. Very strange. If I pause the recording and stop that recording process, the window then starts working again. All right. Anyways, 
our instance is now launching. So let's go over and take a look at this instance. And this is the instance we are going to connect to. And by the way, uh, as you probably know, these, these instances uh, of Linux, they spin up very, very fast. So this thing will start running for you. And look at that. It's already running now. And look at this uh, information about that image. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this connect button and notice we're going to grab this SSH client information. We don't need to do all these steps. This step right here is if we were on a Linux box, that's how you would fix the permissions there. All I need to do is grab this example SSH syntax right here. Now, I don't know why there's such confusion about this out there. Everyone like grabs something like putty to do this. And I don't know why they do that. In Windows 10 and Windows 11, there is a built-in SSH client. So all I need to do is go to my C drive. Uh, I actually want to go to the root of C. There we go. And then I'm going to do that dir command. What we need to do is we need to go into this obscure directory where our PEM file exists. So I'm going to CD A13DS2. And now that I'm in that directory, I'm going to paste in the SSH string that I got from the AWS Connect area. And notice I say yes, cache my credentials, and we're in. Whoop, it just spit us out. That's funny. And it says, nope, your private key file is too wide open. All right, perfect. I'm so glad we got this error message because I'm going to now go in and I thought they might be a little too open. I was I was very nervous about this users group right here uh, getting that much access. So let's do this. So I can go ahead and I can remove the permissions and I got to first break the inheritance. So they're coming in via inheritance. So I'm going to go to the advanced and I'm going to disable inheritance and I'm going to remove all inherited permissions. No, I'll just convert the inherited permissions to, uh, you know, these new uh, permissions that I can manipulate. And I'm going to go ahead and, as I said, I'm going to remove this entry altogether. All right, there we go. I'm going to say, OK, OK. That's going to meet the security requirements of AWS. Let's check it out. So once again, I'm in the folder where the file is located. I'm going to SSH in and bad permissions. All right. Well, time to get extreme. We go in and I'm going to go into properties, security, and I'm going to edit and I'm actually going to add my user account. So I should be able to add the account that I am logged in with. Look at that. I'm going to remove the admins and I'm going to give myself full control. So now I have locked down this PEM just to me. And if it doesn't work, I would be stunned. And it works. Look at that. We're in. So you have to get very, very specific on those permissions in order to allow uh, AWS to let you in. All right. And now, of course, I'm going to issue a shutdown dash H now because that thing can shut down. Oh, does it want the permissions to be able to shut down? Probably. And there we go. So, uh, all right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Here we saw the splendors of connecting from a Windows box via SSH, the built-in SSH client of a Windows 10 or 11 system. And uh, we SSH right into the command line of our Linux host. We saw one of the challenges we ran into Windows there was setting the permissions just so, so that we could get in. Thanks again for watching.